Welcome, I'm your host, Malcolm Gallagher, from our BizVision studios in the UK. You're watching the BVTV network. Now, I've been a professional speaker for over, I'll admit, to 30 years, and I've headlined many events, but the thrill I get of meeting another speaker never goes. My guest today is not only an accomplished TEDx speaker, but also a public speaking instructor. So double the excitement for me to meet her. But I don't want to talk to my guest today about speaking, but rather use the precious time with her to talk conscious leadership, leaders of tomorrow, and especially the important subject of women in leadership. The world may have moved forward 10 years in the last 10 months, but has equality, diversity, inclusion kept pace? Our BVTV channel has a key focus on the need for tomorrow's leaders to attain equality between male and female quotas. Are we getting there? My guest today has authored a new book called A Message for Tomorrow's Leaders. So let's see what she has to say about our thoughts on equality and conscious leadership as we meet Rosalind Khan. Welcome, Rosalind. Oh, welcome, Malcolm. It is truly an honor to be on your distinguished platform to, to be with you here at BVTV. I'm so excited because our, our missions are so aligned of, you know, the leadership qualities of tomorrow and my message for tomorrow's leaders. There couldn't be a, a better better wrap for us. I love hey, it. I think we're, we're, we're safely wrapped. But I'm talking to you. You're in um, uh, La La Land, aren't you? Is it La La oh, Land? La La Land. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. We're in the northeast, uh, cold northeast of Northumberland, but never mind. We're socially distanced, so therefore we can get on with our chat. I'm delighted you're kindly guesting on our fast-growing BVTV Today's Leader channel. And now, in this BVTV show, viewers and listeners, I'll be talking to Rosalind in our traditional three parts. So first, I'll ask her, what's holding back women entrepreneurs and how can it be overcome, that holdback? In part two, I'll ask her about her book, Roses and Dogs, How to Reduce Stress in Today's Troubled Times, and her top tips on managing that stress. I'm looking forward to that one. In part three, I want to move to her new book and talk about her message for tomorrow's leaders. What is that message and why do they need it? But Rosalind, before we get into that uh, three-part chat, can you briefly introduce yourself to viewers and listeners who is Rosalind Khan, and what's your fixation about TEDx speaking? Well, my name is Rosalind Khan. I'm a TEDx speaker. I'm an author. I'm a humanitarian. And I was drawn to the TEDx by uh, a colleague of mine in a group called the the group was to help people to get into businesses and do training and professional development and things like that. And when I got on the TED stage, my first talk was called Language Comes to Life. It was about being in the classroom and how I helped my students see the vision of the movie that was called 12 Angry Men. Mm. And they were so drawn in and there wasn't time in the class that they had to see the end of it. And it was just a, a beautiful offspring that, you know, that came language comes to life. The second one could have been taped in today's day. It was called Breaking Cultural Barriers mm -hmm. and, and how we could rebuild and, and put those back together. And the third one was a personal experience called Coming Around the Curve with my battle with scoliosis and how that made me into a more compassionate human being. And, wow. you know, some people talk on one thing and, I like to be that multi-entrepreneur who likes to delve into different issues because they all touch different people to bring bring out the best in them. Mm. I, I, it's quite exciting, that personal bit. Uh, was it a little bit of a, uh, an emotional challenge for you to talk about your, your own personal challenges in front of such a big audience? Well, I always think you never know whose life you can change. And if every day I mm. can change his life, that's what it was all about. And what was interesting in this speech, it was at a local high school. Um, and there were all these kids. And unlike most events, they had this opportunity where when you finish speaking, these, these kids came up and they would talk to you. And this young lady came up to me and she said, oh, Rosalind, you know, I, I know a person at school and your speech so much helped me. And that, that really touched my, my soul. And you know, this might be five, seven, eight years ago, but I'll still remember those faces and of the administrators sitting there looking out at me of, you know, 
I say it's scoliosis, but it could be any barrier. It could be any difference mm-hmm. that anybody has of, of being different and how we all need to, to unify ourselves and how we need to bring ourselves together. Um, that's what it's, it's all about. I, I admire you for doing that. I was talking to a, um, a American motivator this morning who was retired to Greece, Dave, and he was saying, you know, if you've got something like what you've got, that ability there, it's almost criminal if you don't speak about it. I, I thought that was quite interesting, don't you? No, it's, it's, we all have a message. And a friend of mine, his name is Lee Pound, he's Coach Wright, and he was on with me last night for, for quite late. Mm-hmm. And um, his saying is, we all have a book in our heart, and wouldn't it be a crime to go to the grave without having those words shared with the world? Yeah, and, it's beautiful. I like that. I really like that. Rosalind, let's start our talk in part one. What's, what's holding back women entrepreneurs and how can it all be overcome? Is it funding, confidence, spouse support, work-life balance or something else? Well, I think it's, it's, a, it's a combination of, of all of those things. You know, here in the U.S., they have this PHP funding and so on and so forth. And, you know, some people throw up their hands and they can't do it. There's been a lot of businesses that have gone ahead and and closed down because of the pandemic that is, has caused grave harm. There's an increase in crime that's going on out there. And, you know, I'm, I'm working with a, a lady right now who um, is in the nursing field, in the nursing profession, and she's trying to train people and listening to the hesitation, the, the hold back um, is, 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 is frightening. But also on the same part, there's a lot of people who've used it to, to take themselves out and to do some amazing things in our world. You know, I myself had gone out and did 108 videos on how to reduce stress and anxiety in today's troubled times. Um, I received an award for the Women of the Year uh, from several organizations. The Los Angeles Business Journal gave me an award. I got my DTM and Toastmasters. I got an award for kindness. And mm. You know, it's it, and and yet there's also the problem of 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 spousal support. You know, there are many people yeah. who are home with their abusers and things like that. And you know, because of the lockdown, they're they're forced to be there. And you know, sometimes people might support you, but other otherwise, what are you doing? Why are you spending all that time on the computer? Do you ever get off the computer? Do you have anything else to do but be on that computer? And you know, we're one Zoom call after the other Zoom call after the other Zoom call after the other Zoom call and. And some people just fall out. I mean, I've seen several groups that, that meet online that are, are hurting because people are so sick and tired of being online. Yeah, but that's going to be our way of life, isn't it, Roslyn? Um, the hybrid, I mean, big companies are, are saying now, you, uh, here in the UK, BP, uh, I hear that Coca-Cola and people like that are all saying work from home from wherever you are, but you're going to work at least two days a, a week from home if you want to come into the office. So it's going to be a challenge, isn't it? Well, it's, 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 it's an amazing transformation. There are so many people who took this opportunity to move house and home, and mm. a lot of people have moved to Texas, moved to Las Vegas, Arizona. Um, where the cost of living is 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 so much so much lower, yeah. and I've heard speakers basically said, "Don't need to be getting on any planes anymore. Don't need to be flying here, there, and everywhere." And yeah. it's it's completely changed the world. And people who used to just get up on stages and sell two thousand dollar packages to to do this. Mm, I know, I know exactly what you mean because that's that was my my life, but. Uh, since March, we pivoted and, you know, you're kindly on our BBTV program. We won two in an international awards for in that time. And um, this week, I think, uh, well, you uh, and maybe tomorrow, but let's fiddle it for you about our 500th interviewee since last wow. March. Yeah. And, which is a lot. And I haven't left home. I haven't yeah. had to jack jet lag. I haven't had to wherever. Maybe, you know, I haven't had to beg your TSA to let me into the country. <laughs> wow. And, and, 
And yet I see this huge, huge smile on your face. I see this huge, huge glow and yeah. it's, it's oh, learning to, to that, work. That's, to that's, that's the cream, Rosalind. That's the cream. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, look, look, look. You'll be spelling me. You'll be selling me that at the end of the show. I know. <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. We got it. We got it. Yeah, but Mal it's, Mal it's, Mal Mal Malcolm's reducing age cream, you know, made from all oh my garden. <laughs> no, rubbish. Oh. Uh, Before we move to part two, I'd like to remind viewers and listeners of your website URL, which I want to encourage everybody to go and have a look at. So it's um, for viewers, obviously, you can see it on the screen behind me. But for listeners, let me read that out to you. Obviously, it's all the W's and then Rosalind, and that's spelled R O S A. L Y Rosalind Khan and Khan is spelt K A H N RosalindKhan.com. Rosalind, time for part two. Let's talk about roses and dogs. Well, your book that is. If you talk about reducing stress in today's troubled times, and I think this is so 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 important. Give us some ideas on how that can be done, and the dangers of not reducing stress. Well, here's, here's the really sad point. If you go to my YouTube channel, Rosalind Khan, there's a speech that I gave that talks about going ahead and reducing stress. And what we're seeing is an overwhelming number of people who are turning to drugs, mm -hmm. turning to alcohol, they're turning to opioid. And there's been a huge gargantuan number of people who are ending their life. And it's, it's, it's really sad. And let me tell you how the book came about, because I want people to know this bright and cheery and uplifting person. I was depressed too. There mm -hmm. are times in this pandemic that I kind of feel down. Yeah, yeah. Here's, here's, here's what we need to do. I had a life coach and he asked me, what really makes you happy, Rosalind? And I said, it's dogs, it's roses. And so when I get up and my dog is there to greet me or I'm down on the floor and I'm stretching. He'll come and snuggle. He'll climb over me. He'll put his paw out and say, rub my buns or whatever it is he does. Yeah. He, he reminds me it's, 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 it's life. It's fun. Remember me. It's not so bad. Yeah. yeah. And I, I love the roses because no rose is ever alike. Mm. And if you look in the eye and the heart of the rose, magic transpires. And what's really interesting is when you look at those essential oils, one of the most expensive oils that you can have is rose oil. It's very good for healing. And, and I suggest to people three simple things. Number one, find what soothes your heart. For me, it's the roses. Mm. For me, it's the, the dogs. Maybe there's some favorite musical track when you go ahead and put on. Maybe it's tinkering out in the garden. Maybe it's tinkering with technology. Maybe it's simply getting up a piece of paper and writing. Find what works for you. A really simple thing is, and I want to share this strategy and this technique. I want you to sit up straight and tall. Yeah. Sit up straight and tall, Malcolm. Yeah, I've got it. I'm doing exactly okay, get it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we're going to practice a breathing activity. It's called 6421. Okay. You inhale, you count for six. And then you let it go to four, you let it go to two, and then we let it go. Are we ready? One, two, three. Inhale. Six. Four. Two. And relax. Ah. Again. Okay, inhale, count of six, and then we go four, two, and one. I'll let okay. you know the six and four. Okay, here we go. Shoulders up. Six. Four, two, one. Relax. Very good. And, and I better not do any more. I better do not do any more. I'll fall asleep, Rosalind, in, in the middle of the interview. Can't do that. No, that 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 that'd be horrible. But yeah. but I want to let people know that this is a simple thing that you can do. Any is, point yeah. of the of, of the day is 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 to do that. Yeah. And the third one is to begin each day with meditation or quiet time. I mm. love this meditation by this thing that's called Vipassana meditation. Mine is 15.83. You can go to the insight timer and it's basically quiet time where you turn off the channel of all the noise and the monkey business that's going in your head and mm. you just 
go go inside. Yeah, yeah. We all we all need to to take that step of to to go inside of our head and, and turn off the noise that's out there because mm-hmm. you know that's that's what's missing. I I, I discovered different ones. I I like exactly what you say. The morning, the affirmation. I open my, the curtains of my bedroom. Um, I watch everything, and then I, when I'm feeling just about right because we're looking at some beautiful countryside here in Northumberland. Uh, then I'll go and make my wife a pot of tea and take it to her room. But my other way, my other way of relaxation is strange enough. It's exciting meeting people like you, but uh, you know, at the end of the day, I started in Greece this morning. I've been in London. I've been, I, I've been quite a little different few places today. At the end of the day, there's nothing nicer than putting on a couple of candles and having a dinner with my wife and talking about our grandchildren. Wow. You know? Wow. And that it is, just that is... goes, goes, you know? It's a, it sounds fabulous. You'll have to send me a picture of that countryside. It sounds absolutely lovely. I it's, it's, love it's, pictures. And, but, yeah. but children are, are the, the light to the world. Yeah, unfortunately, we, we've got four grandchildren, two daughters, four grandchildren. Uh, two of the grandchildren are only a few miles away, so we look after them in our bubble, as it's called. But the other two are only 90 miles away in, in the city of York, and we haven't seen them for nearly a year because it would be illegal to do so. So we are so looking forward to that first cuddle. Do you know what I mean? The first, our first cuddle? Yeah, and oh, that's, it's, that, it's, that, that's going to be a stress relief, reliever, isn't it? You know, it's it's funny. They say here in the United States, you have to have the COVID test to be able to hug people. <laughs> right. You got to get your COVID shots before you can hug people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, um, yeah, uh, right. Except, yeah, well, unless you've been in a bar and had too much to drink. Let's talk. Let's move on, though. I, I want to really talk to you about your latest book, and this is in part three. A message for tomorrow's leaders. Uh, you're kindly on the Today Leader Show uh, because we're saying that what happened in the past, you know, isn't going to work in the future generally. Uh, is there also a message in your book for conscious leadership? How does your book help tomorrow's uh, and again today's leaders cope with these new challenges of business in this altered world? Well, what's, what's interesting about the book is I was describing it to someone and I came up on a, on a YouTube channel and I, I like the idea. It's an ethnographic study of the pandemic, the protest and the riots looking a year in reflection. It combines 46 essays from people from 12 years old to 48 years old to, to 88 years old. Wow. And, um, you know, one of, the, one of the best descriptions is a gentleman that I talked to who's the head of the Faculty Association of California Community Colleges. He gave me this message the other day, and it, it just nearly brought me to tears. He said his wife had read his story. He was oversaw all the, the community colleges from the northern to the southern California, and it had endured this with pancreatic cancer, which most people is a death sentence. It is, yes. And his doctor said, do it as long as you can because I want you to keep busy. And he did it until his body said that he could do no more. But in his piece, he talks about knowledge in the classroom, knowledge outside the classroom, and the wisdom to make a difference. And he said when he, he finished this book, he said, Rosalind, the world in London, the world in Greece, mm. the world universally needs to hear this message. And, you know, strongly encouraged me to, to get this out to as many people as possible because it's a collection of a career book for people in many different ways. There's, there's stars of, of the movies, there's stars of the singing, there's people who work in automotive repair, there's heads of universities, there's teachers, there's, um, there's one gentleman whose name is Yeprin who is the community college uh, chair at, uh, at Pierce College. And I shared the videos with my students to motivate and inspire them during the pandemic. And he said when he read a response that a student had written, he was so moved and he put mm. him to tears. Um, this book has questions. It has answers. 
it has experience of people who've, who've been through downsizing, who've been through job losses, who see the world changing. And yeah. as we almost come up on a university, it's a, a collection of history being made. I, 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 what is so exciting about what you're saying there is that I think we are more receptive to that sort of, to thinking, to pause, to think nowadays than we were pre-COVID. And, and look at that excitement of, of uh, with the President Biden's inauguration with the, the young girl, uh, the, the lady who, who read the right. poem, poem. She was inspirational, right. wasn't she? She was, she was, she was absolutely correct, incredible. And, uh, and I read in a newspaper that it's Lonster. She's got two or three books. She's got sponsorships and, and this, that, and the other. But I think the thing that, that inspired me the most as a teacher of, of public speaking is the time and the preparation that she put in yeah. of the way that she took big accomplished names and she put them in a way that we could all relate to and we mm -hmm. could all connect. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what an accomplished speaker does, and to see her from there to going to the um, the football game, the um, you know the football game, the the world's not the World Series. Yeah, yeah, yes, I know, yeah, yeah. But what <laughs> I li what I liked about what she was doing, and what I'm guessing from 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 your book is that it's a world message. You uh, too often people write local messages, or they like. Me, me messages, you know, uh, the, yeah. the, your former president. But, you know, the message that she was given in that poem was a world message, wasn't it? No, it, 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 it truly is. And that's, that's why it, it just makes me so happy that I have the chance to share it with you. I've been in Canada. I've been in India. Um, and I'm looking for a, a bigger world out there to, to share this mm -hmm. message because so many people need, need to hear that, that there is hope. Mm. That in that, that moment of despair to just pick up, to read a chapter could really take you back to where you need to be and keep mm. you on the side of the path. I just love that. So let me just remind people before I have to leave LA and get back to cold New England um, of your URL, your website again. You're listening to write this down, listeners. Viewers, obviously, you can see it on the screen behind me. But listeners, remember, it's all the W's. Rosalyn, spelled R-O-S-A-L-Y-N. Rosalyn Khan, Khan, spelled K-A-H-N. Rosalyn Khan, dot com. And pop along and obviously get details of a brilliant range of books. But this latest one, Tomorrow's Leaders, that's the one I think where we all need that personal inspiration and i guess listening to where rosalind's coming it's one of those books that you'll keep dipping back into you'll keep dipping back into i started the show by saying how excited i was about meeting a fellow professional speaker i've learned a lot from meeting rosalind and i trust you have too so thanks rosalind khan for a great interview Malcolm, it's truly been a pleasure being your guest. Uh, I can understand why, why Professor Pete said you were his favorite. I do. <laughs>